Welcome to another Tabitha's Glass Emporium YouTube video. Today we're looking at this, which is a twisty cane little bowl. Um, I've made one of these before and a couple of people asked me how I made it. So I thought I'd do a little YouTube video showing you how. So the first thing I needed to do for this project was cut a piece of tech to base glass. Now I made mine 20 by 20. Our canes are 20 centimetres long and I wanted to do a square, so I've done them 20 by 20. And then um, I've taken the pack of canes. So these packs of canes come in 30 canes, because that's about how many you need to do this. And I'm literally going to put a couple of strips of this across and I've arranged them nice and neatly in pretty rainbow. A rainbow. There are some white ones we've put in the pack as well, but those go quite nicely in the middle. It's up to you how you want to arrange yours, but this is how I'm arranging mine. And I just put them all across here like this. And I'm going to get about, you know, for those of you who know that your, you know, um, glass wants to be six millimetres thick. So I've got a bottom piece of texture, which is about, um, it's three millimetres thick. Sorry, it's not about, it is three millimetres thick. And then this top piece of these glass will kind of all depend. Some of them are slightly smaller, some of them are slightly bigger. And of course, they're thicker at the top of the curve and thinner at the bottom. But all in all, I'm going to get about my six millimetres here. Now, it depends on what you want to do and how, um, how you want to be. I think I'm going to put some strips of fibre paper around this and dam it to keep it in a nice square when it fires. But you don't have to do that. I'm lucky I have grinders so I can grind off the edges afterwards if I do that. Whereas if you don't have a grinder, you're probably just going to want to let it do, let it go in a kind of natural slump. Um, no, not a natural slump, but a natural fuse. And it might be slightly kind of um, more organic shape, but that's still going to look great. So here it is. All the pieces are on. Um, just going to make sure they're all kind of nicely lined up. Um, I may have to cut a few down if they're hanging over the edge if I'm going to dam it. If you're not going to dam it, you don't need to worry. You can just let it slump like that. And then it can go in the kiln on a full fuse and we can see how it is when it comes out. Well, here's my setup in the kiln. I just use these kiln posts and a little bit of fibre paper around to dam before it goes in for a full fuse. So here it is out of the kiln. It's nicely full fused together. You can see all the, the um, canes have melted down into the bottom piece of glass. Then because I've dammed it, the, you had a few spikes on the um, side of the glass, which I've cold worked, I've ground off. I did it first with 120 grit and then with 400 grit, um, which gives it a nice satin finish. It means that I won't need to fire polish it. It means it won't go shiny shiny, it'll be a kind of slightly um, satiny matte finish after the fire polish but i don't mind that um we're going to slump it not fire polish it sorry slump it into a mold now and we can have a look when it comes out i'm going to use a bowl mold i quite like doing this round bowl molds for um, slumping squares i think you get quite an interesting shape um i once i've set it up in the kiln i'll do a little shot of that so you can see how i set it up so here it is ready in the kiln the other thing i'm going to do is put a spirit level on it and just check the whole thing is level i always do that and then I can put the piece of glass on the mould. Sorry, I'm filming and trying to move things and it's probably making the camera wobble. So that is now ready to go in the kiln and we can turn it on and see how it feels when it's slumped. So here it is out of the kiln. I really love the kind of using a square in a bowl shape. I think you end up with a really lovely piece. Um, I think it's really pretty how this has turned out. The edge has come up really nice, even after I ground it. Um, it's got a quite a kind of nice spin on it. It doesn't have a, it um, almost sort of balances quite nicely. But if you would prefer to put a bit more steady base on the bottom, you can always use bumpers. You can get these online. Furniture stores quite often do them um, uh, because, you know, you put them on your furniture so you don't sort of slam cupboard doors. Um, so you can put those on the bottom. I don't think I put them on particularly in the right place, but you get the idea. Um, and then it, you can have a bottom so it sits steadily. So it's up to you whether you want it to move organically or you want a solid, stable bottom you can put bumpers on. Um, so I really hope you'd like this, this tutorial. I've got to say, we're selling twisty canes right now. Um, we have 11 lots of rainbow canes for 40 euros so you can with a piece of tector and that you can make one of these beautiful ones yourself 
So they're on the website and the link will be below. And if you don't get a chance to buy those because they're sold out, there are always just um, bundles. We sell them in different colours in bundles of fives. So you can always buy those and they're really good value, like seven euros for one bundle of five. Um, and um, that's a kind of, you know, amazing value for, for five lovely twisty canes. If you don't get to choose which ones you get, you could just get five of any particular colour. That's why we call them surprise twisty canes. Um, but they're all fun. You can see, you know, even the ones with not very much in them give you a great, lovely kind of added addition to a project like this. Um, I think it's wonderful. I just love everything rainbow. So, you know, I'm a big fan. But I hope you've liked this video. And if you have, please subscribe.